In this part, we witness the first encounter between two of Dickens's most famous characters, Mr. Micawber and Uriah Heep. A subplot is also introduced involving Dr. Strong and his very young wife. And we're treated to the first of David's retrospects as he matures from a boy into a very romantic young man. What does Mr. Wickfield's house remind you of or suggest to you? I wonder how many of you wrote down, or at least thought, Fairy Tale Cottage. The house seems to be animated and endowed with senses, almost like in a Disney cartoon. It's also a model of neatness and spotlessness, a testimony to the housekeeping skills of Agnes, the angel in the house. But there's also a sinister element suggested by the low round tower at one end of the building, the domain of Mr. Wickfield's insidious employee, Uriah Heep. The Hungarian Revolution was finally crushed and 13 of its leaders were executed at Arad on October the 6th. The triumphant Austrians reputedly clinked beer glasses after the event, which initiated a custom amongst Hungarians that survived for the next 150 years of never clinking beer glasses in a toast. There were some other significant deaths this month in the world of the arts. The virtuoso pianist and composer Frédéric Chopin and the poet and storyteller Edgar Allan Poe, who, like Dickens, was a pioneer in the development of detective fiction. From Bonchurch, Dickens returned to Broadstairs, determined to extend his summer holiday as long as possible, and enjoyed himself tremendously during his stay at the Albion Hotel, which I visited in October 2021. Once he finally returned to London around the 18th, he carried on working up his ideas for a weekly magazine, provisionally entitled The Shadow. There are few more instantly recognisable names in the Dickens canon than the very humble Uriah Heep. I have to admit that I was a fan of the heavy metal band who borrowed this name long before I was a fan of Dickens. In analysing the name, I'll leave Heap to speak for itself and concentrate on Uriah, which is a real but rare name. After all, in the wake of Uriah Heap, who would wish to name their child Uriah? There is though one very significant historical figure who bore this name, Uriah the Hittite, who appears in the second book of Samuel. This was undoubtedly Dickens' source for the name as, without going into the details here, in the Bible story, Uriah and David are rivals for one woman's favours. Hmm. At the end of this part, there's an eight-page supplement advertising the wares of Waterloo and Sons, wholesale and retail stationers, printers by steam power, etc, etc, etc. Note how every line of the text is in a different font or type size indicating how versatile they are. In addition to stationery and office sundries, they prominently feature ways of producing multiple copies of manuscript from a single original. In particular, their patent letter copying machines and that indispensable accessory, the patent capillary instantaneous copying paper damper. Dickens and his staff used this technology to make copies of correspondence with contributors to his magazines, some of which have survived, but are barely legible. Here we see David having returned to Dr. Strong's after a party to retrieve Agnes's reticule, chancing upon an intimate domestic scene. Annie Strong is kneeling at her mild-mannered scholarly husband's feet in an attitude of supplication and with her face expressing a complex mixture of emotions to which Dr. Strong seems entirely oblivious. And here are the heaps at home, stealthily wheedling secrets out of the unsuspecting David, when somebody turns up. The maudlin, mellifluous master of melodrama, Mr. Micawber. And as an example of Mr. Micawber's grandiloquent verbosity, this is how he assesses the situation he now finds himself in. 
I have discovered my friend Copperfield, said Mr. Micawber genteelly, and without addressing himself particularly to anyone, not in solitude, but partaking of a social meal in company with a widow lady, and one who is apparently her offspring. In short, said Mr. Micawber in another of his bursts of confidence, her son. I shall esteem it an honour to be presented. I could do no less under these circumstances than make Mr. Micawber known to Uriah Heep and his mother, which I accordingly did. As they abased themselves before him, Mr. Micawber took a seat and waved his hand in his most courtly manner. Any friend of Copperfield's, said Mr. Micawber, has a personal claim upon myself. My question this week requires some lateral thinking and inventiveness as the answer is quite deliberately not given in the text. It concerns David's teenage crush on one of the Mrs. Nettingall's girls, whom he would see every Sunday in Canterbury Cathedral. So, how specifically might Miss Shepherd have found her way into the chanting of the choristers? Hymn books out, everyone! <laughs>